Yo, welcome, Frony. So today I want to show you what you are doing to progress your character once you are level 50. So we are going to go over the end game loop. Not everyone probably has the luxury to play like 10, 12 hours a day. So you need to be efficient with the time that you have available. And that first comes with when are you actually able to play. Some times are just more efficient than others. You will see there are some parts where there's not that many events and some where you can get um, lots of rewards for many events. So first thing is, if you have the luxury to be able to select one of those time frames for your playtime, then it's always better to play when there's lots of events. And you also want to plan all other tasks around those events. So you will never skip like for example uh, any of those events right here for doing something else those events always have priority if you do not like pvp then go into the peace events if you like pvp go for the pvp ones the only exception for those events is the whale you are only doing if you're in need of marins to maybe still level up your skills or something like this then it could be wise to go to the whale as well and gather some of the marins that spawn on his back so now one of the tasks that you're doing every day or you stack it up and do it once it's time to do it are the contracts right here those contracts stack up to 60 you're getting 10 every day if you cannot do it for like a couple of days it doesn't matter just don't waste it on 60 but you don't have any time on that day do at least one of those contracts to get to 59 then you are able to stack them up all the way to 69 and you only um, lose out one contract there then how do you actually do those contracts At, if a server is new you want to focus on your weapon so you will pick for example rare rubrics every time when you get presented with that selection you will only select one piece and then you will continue rolling you can see here by the accepted contracts because you want to have as many of those pouches as possible because they will give you additional contracts that you can keep farming. Basically, I would select one, I would accept that, I would instantly roll again, and then I would check also, like here I have many weapons um, choices available, which one is in the same area. Because we are here at Watcher's Post, and so that means we are getting contract for Fono Bazaar on Ruins of Turian. You do not want to do your contracts actually at the Pure Light Tower where you would also get high level contracts. I have done some testings and those are the fastest to complete. So at Watcher's Post, focusing on Phono Bazaar. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe when you're selecting your contracts that all of them that you are doing will be in Fono Bazaar so you can do it in one go finish five and go and get the next five the next thing is going to be dungeons that you can do every day and you will use that currency here the dimensional contract token and you have a stack up to 4500 and every day you're getting 900 opening the end chest in one of those dungeons is 300 so you have three runs a day that you can do in those dungeons if you do not have a team then you will go to party matchmaking you will sign up for the dungeon that you want to do you will select the role your tank a damage dealer or a healer and then you will have that running so that i will just show you you will have that running here and you always want to start with this to get that running and then afterwards you want to start doing your contract so while it's searching for the party you're already doing something else where it doesn't matter if you're getting ported out of it and go into the dungeon and once you finish the dungeon you can just continue doing your contracts when you are doing your contract you will earn the abyssal contract tokens right here those can be spent in all of the open world dungeons and always when you are reaching 20 or actually a bit before 20k so you're not wasting any you will go and want to farm out those 20k tokens in one of those dungeons the reason why you want to stack up all the way and not one by one is this food right here that you can craft the rare soft steam bird egg that is giving you 50 percent increased soul and bonus which is perfect and it lasts one hour so you can farm the whole 20k basically down in that one hour and benefit from that bonus if you are progressing your cooking it will get even better because the rare golden apple pie will also have that your tokens will get deducted with a 10% lower weight so you can get more value out of it. 
So those are the three core elements of your endgame loop. And now you can fill that up with some things that you can basically do unlimited. If a server is new, you will still have many quests open in the exploration tab here in your codex. And you can go and farm for upgrade materials and stuff that you need out of those quests whenever you have time and you're not busy with like one of the three main tasks or one of the events because those are not running away they are staying there forever and you can do them whenever you have the additional time we have just also said that cooking is a major part of the game so some ingredients um, you can just buy but others you will have to gather or farm for monsters so this is also something when you are trying to increase your cooking you want to get all the good food out for pvp or get some more damage for your bosses in the PvE, make sure to use that extra time to farm all of those ingredients. Another way that you can basically unlimited farm every day is by entering a dungeon, like for example, Tyrant Isle, and running all the way to the um, first mini boss, killing that mini boss, because this will drop you Polish crystals and some craft materials, and then you can just go out of the dungeon, reset it, it will not deduct any of your contract tokens, and it's a viable way to get more of those materials that you will heavily need to craft all those growth stones and get the power spike up of your gear. Once you are a bit more progressed in the game itself and Solent becomes a bottleneck for you, then you will speed farm dungeons. So you will go to those dungeons, you will set up a team that can clear one of those easy dungeons really, really fast. And you will just keep doing that over and over you will not even bother opening the chest. Of course, the, for the first ones you can do it, but it's not about the chest. It's just going speed, getting the materials from the mini bosses and also the Solent from the end boss. If you're able to do that with smaller groups, you will get more Solent per run. Just make sure you do the math so it's um, really efficient. And this can sometimes be the best Solent farm per hour if your Abyssal contract tokens are currently not at 20k. What you should also have an eye on are the weekly missions. So as you're doing it, um, if you can do it, try to unlock as many of those as possible because in the end of the week, you can only choose one of them as a reward. So you want to try to unlock as many as possible so you can actually choose the reward that is giving you the highest power spike. Probably the most important one is actually the auction house. Like you want to be living in that thing. This thing is so important not only like for people that are cashing also as a free to play player you always want to have an eye on the market prices to see where you can maybe do a nice um resale someone maybe put an item in for too cheap and then you can buy it resell it a lot higher um, and you can do that by getting favorites on items so you just have any gear and you see okay this is usually uh, maybe like 1800 someone put it way too cheap and you can favorite it and then you will always have it here so this is basically like when you're playing you will bind the auction house to a button one glance into the favorites is anything here on that is currently a good value a good deal no go out continue the game it's really those short glances that you should be doing regularly i would say as often as every 15 minutes because the stuff that gets put in the auction house is pretty fast paced and many people are also trying to snipe stuff and earn money this way the only thing you have to be careful is the prices are with a tax when you want to calculate your return of investment make sure you think about the tax as well yeah guys that was it with the task that you're doing once you're level 50 your end game loop if you still have any questions or recommendations just let me know i will answer all comments as always in less than 24 hours cheers guys